Amber Lai. <laughs> I am. I, I. You know what? I love doing these podcasts, but Dave, this podcast today, it is gonna. I'm gonna be bringing it hard. And I will say this before we begin. Some of you might not like what I say. Some of you may not agree with what I say. But I will say this. I have literally been doing this for almost 26 years. And the things that I'm going to share and Dave is going to share, it's going to blow your mind about Carfax and these history reports. You ready to kick it, Dave? Heck yeah. <laughs> Have you ever felt like you were taken for a ride when buying, selling, or repairing your car? Well, not anymore. I'm Jay. And I'm Dave. And this is the podcast that tells you what to watch out for, whether you're buying, selling, or repairing your car. With 47 years of automotive experience, we are the Automotive Authorities. This podcast is sponsored by iAuto Agents. We're real estate agents for cars. And Quality Auto STL. Trusted services with no surprises. And we are live. Yes, we are. We have so much to share. And if you didn't catch what I said before, I'm going to share some things. Dave is going to share some things that is going to blow your mind and that will really make you think a little bit differently about these Carfax and history reports. You know that? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Dave. So I'll tell you this. Um, before we begin, I do want to thank our sponsor, Techie Tony with Techie Tony Media, making this stuff happen. We are so appreciative of him. And again, my name is Jay Grossman. I'm the founder and CEO of iAuto Agent. And I'm Dave Marks with Quality Auto STL, trusted services with no surprises. All right, you ready to begin? Heck yeah, we are. Yeah, I'm so pumped. I'm ready to come out of this chair <laughs> so dave you know what carfax is right uh i got a good idea but you know what what is carfax jay well carfax is a history report and what it does is in theory it allows you to see the history of a vehicle from the start to all the way to the current Okay. Well, how do we go about reading one of those? So there's a couple different ways to read it. So when, when you're looking at the car facts, it's going to tell you quite a few different things. The very first thing that I like to do, well, first of all, it's important to know who reports to car facts. Yeah. So let's talk about that. And then I'm going to tell you the things to look for on a car facts that could potentially cause red flags and you know help you make an educated decision. So Dave, I mean, you're, you're a technician. Do you report to Carfax? Uh, to my knowledge, no. I use Mitchell One, which is an automotive industry recognized automotive POS system. And to my knowledge, it does not report any of the services that I do to Carfax. So here's the scary part is you are one of many of technicians out there that do not report to Carfax. There are so many different sources that do not report to Carfax, insurance companies, uh, police departments, municipalities. And when you don't report something to Carfax, what happens? Yeah, I don't see it. So this is what, this is what I like to do when I'm reading a Carfax, I like to look at owners. That's the first thing I I want to see how many owners that vehicle has. Because if it's had 12 owners in a matter of three years, that may be a problem. Right? Yeah, I've seen those. But you know what? The one owner cars are not always going to be great cars. But it's nice to see a one owner car. So the next piece is when you're looking at a Carfax, you want to look at the type of ownership it was. Hmm. Was it a personal? Was it a rental car? Was it a lease? Was it a taxi cab? <laughs> I mean, it, you don't know. Um, and, and again, it reports what is reported to it. 
So if it is not reported it, and if you know where I'm going with this, Dave, because as we get into the show, I'm going to tell you some things that you might fall out of your chair when I tell you this. Sure. And this is great for everybody to know. So get, you know, get your ears open if you're if you're on there on um, listening right now. Because the next thing I look at, and I know you'll know this, Dave, where was it owned? Was it owned mm-hmm. in Missouri? What if it was owned in Michigan, Dave? Yeah, lots of rust up in Michigan. What about New York? Uh, I'd say lots of rust potential too. Not no, not just rust, but people on the East Coast don't drive their cars as nice. We really have a lot of pride for our cars in the Midwest. We really do. And there's also a lot of parking that is very congested in the Midwest. I'm sorry, not in the Midwest, on the, on the coast. So right then and there, you're looking at owners. You're looking at where it was owned. The other thing that I like to look at, too, is the warranty. Does It actually will tell you when the in-service date was on that vehicle. When was that vehicle brand new? And does it still have a warranty? Because if it's a 2018 and it has a three or 36,000 miles, well, that doesn't mean that it was bought in 2018. 2018's come out in 2017. And that could make a big difference on the value of a car when you're buying a car with a warranty and one that does not have a warranty, right? Absolutely. So this is my favorite, though. This is my favorite. I'm going to pause right there, Jay. Or Jay yeah. go, when that end service date, just quickly tell us okay. what, what that is again. So what an in-service date means is that is when the car was bought brand new. So let's say it's a 2018. We all know that the newer models always come out the year before. So when you're buying a 2018, you may very well not be getting a warranty with that car. And we talked about warranties and all those, all the jazz earlier. But some of these, in my opinion, I'm an, I don't know, politically correct, say these BS certified warranties that I don't like. Um, you know, some of them, oh, well, it's a seven year, 100,000 miles. Oh, yeah. Well, that seven years starts at the in service date, not now when you buy the vehicle. So 100,000 miles, that sounds great. Yeah. But the seven year starts back in 2017. So now you only have three years of warranty and 100,000 miles. It's very deceptive. Sure. Okay, cool. So hopefully, you know, and, and I and if I talk jargon, you know, stop me because I, I am on a roll here. No, I know. So well, the other thing that I I just it drives me nuts. Now there's Carfax and there's Auto Check. Those are the only two history reports that I know of. There's a couple smaller ones in between that sure. you can buy, but those are the ones that are well known. And we're gonna talk about that and the accuracy of those here later. But you know what Carfax is doing now? They are putting prices of what the cars are worth, which is absolutely ridiculous. When I see the values of the cars, so, I mean, there's some sources out there. And and granted, I'm not a big KBB source. Believe me, what I do is I like to look at the market. What is someone willing to pay for a car? And if a dealer has a car for $22,000, and the other one has it for twenty two five, and the other one has it for twenty three thousand. It's fairly close, but if you have another one out there for twenty five thousand, they're not going to sell their car. But when Carfax says, "Oh, you know, this car is worth twenty thousand dollars," or maybe it's the other way, maybe they say it's worth twenty eight thousand. It's so inaccurate, and it drives me nuts because people are like, "Oh, Carfax is so great." Well. I'm not saying that in our company, we don't use Carfaxes. We use a combination of sources when we're, because we have a buyer's agent program where we help people buy vehicles nationwide. And we use a a variety of sources to try to determine, is this vehicle going to be a good vehicle? And one of the things that we use to determine that is servicing in in intervals when we're looking at a Carfax. Mm -hmm. So for instance, oil changes, tire rotations. And what the problem is, is when you have, like, let's say your trusted mechanic um, that you take your cars to, 
and Carfax has not made an agreement with them, no. that mm -hmm. stuff's not, yeah, that stuff's not going to pop up on the Carfax. But that doesn't mean that it's anything worse of a car. The, the main thing that you're going to want to do is, is save those service records because that's going to make a big difference down the road when you're selling that car, right? Absolutely. And speaking of records, I'm going to talk about accidents. I, <laughs> I love your faces. I have had people come to me and they will say, I will not buy a car that does not have a clean Carfax. Good luck. Oh my gosh. Like, do you I've, tell me to go buy brand new? Well, I've got news for you. I've got news for you. A clean Carfax does not mean a better car. In fact, when we start getting, when we start talking a little bit more in depth on some things, you're going to think differently after you watch this episode about how you should look at a Carfax. And I'm not saying it's the worst thing in the world. It's better than nothing. And, and the auto check is another history report. Better than nothing. But when a vehicle says it has an accident, uh, let me tell you something. That doesn't mean it's the end of the world. What you have to do is you have to look a little closer. And you have to take it to people like Dave. And Dave will look over that vehicle. Because Carfax, again, only reports what's reported to it. Dave, have you ever hit somebody? Well, maybe you haven't. But have you ever heard of anybody <laughs> hitting somebody um, on the road? They, 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 they swerved off the road. They damaged their car. And then they drove home. Have you ever heard of that before? No, never. Never. It never has happened, right? It never happens. But guess what? That could have done a lot of damage to that car, and it won't pop up on Carfax. It happens all the time. I'm going to give you a story, and one of our clients. Is it Bobby? Uh, it, it actually was Bobby's um, uncle. Cousin. <laughs> cousin. So Bobby's uncle, cousin, uh, they bought a Camaro. And they wanted to sell their Camaro with iAuto agent. Mm -hmm. And we looked at the Carfax, and it made it look like the car had been totaled out. I am not kidding. It was the worst. It was the worst sounding Carfax I'd ever seen. But when we were on the phone with them, they were like, "Oh, they were talking it up left and right." So we took it a step further, and we started talking to Bobby's uncle. And Bobby's uncle's like, are you talking about that time I bumped somebody at the stoplight? I'm like, I don't know. Was it on, you know, March 18th, 2020? Yeah, that's, that's, that's when it was. It says that it's had that bad of an accident? Yeah, it, it did. So you know what he did, Dave? He sent us photos of the accident. Oh. And you couldn't even tell that the car had even been hit. And right then and there, I was like, I got to teach people about do not put all your weight in these darn car faxes or these auto checks. Because if you get a police officer, law enforcement, that is half blind, <laughs> they could put the wrong report. I'm serious. Like, I... I'm joking, but I've I'm never serious. thought about that. Right. So I'm going to give you a golden nugget right now. If you are in an accident, take a picture of the damage and keep that picture. Because when you decide to sell your car, if it pops up on Carfax, it could devalue your car, which really sucks. Right? And here's the other thing. You know the you know the website Car Gurus? Right? Yeah. Okay. So you know on Car Gurus, it'll tell you if, if there's ever been an accident? Well, no, that, I didn't know that. I've never been on the site. Okay. So what it does is it says only find cars that haven't been in accidents. Well, Car Gurus feeds with auto check. That's the dark side of Carfax. That's their competition. Yeah. So it drives me nuts because sometimes Carfax will say clean 
and then the auto check will say accident. And we'll talk about that accuracy here in a second. <laughs> Here's the other thing. I'm gonna tell you a personal story. I bought a certified car. It was a Mercedes back in the days when Jay was a baller. Um, <laughs> 2003, I bought a certified Mercedes CLK 430. I will not tell you the dealership, but it is a very large dealership somewhere here in St. Louis that sells Mercedes. Um, <laughs> but um, it said clean Carfax, one owner. Hmm. So I was like, dude, this is amazing. I got a one owner. I got a cool car. And yeah. then all of a sudden, I'm driving it off the lot and my air conditioner is out. I'm like, huh, that sucks. And I also noticed a little bit of paint work. So I could, I could actually, I have a keen eye for body work. I can tell when there's paint work and their body work has been done in the car. I didn't even think anything of it. Make a long story short, this engine was getting ready to completely blow. And I took it to my mechanic and he said, hey, this thing's been completely wrecked. And, it, and the whole car had been painted. That means the roof too. <laughs> and I went back to the dealer and I said, did you sell me a wrecked car? And they're like, yeah, when we took it in, it was completely wrecked, but we fixed it in our body shop. <laughs> guess what? Their body shop didn't report to Carfax. That right there should tell you, be careful because when you decide to go, go buy a car and you're putting all your weight in that, that good old Carfax, you're making a bad decision. So that's my personal story. And I, I lost over $12,500 in a little over a year on that car. Holy cow. Because I wanted to dump that car. The harmonic balancer is going like this. It was squeaking. And I'm like, oh, what happened? What, what is that noise? They're like, oh, well, if that breaks, your engine's gone. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Here's the bottom line. There is no verification process with Carfax. None. It is reported what is reported to it. So let's talk about red flags when you're looking at a Carfax. What should you look for? What is a red flag? What would you say is a red flag, Dave? Well, I, you know, a red flag to me would be, you know, you brought it up earlier. You know, owners. I've bought cars from the auction. It's a hundred, it's got 90,000 miles on it. It's had five owners. Like, how the hell does this happen? Exactly. And this is where you can use this to your advantage. And again, you still have to verify these types of things. And it's easier said than done to verify a lot of this stuff. Yeah. So let's just say that it had an owner, you know, in March of 2020. It had an owner in October of 2020. And it had an owner of uh, April of 2020, 21. Yeah, they've been repoed. Why has it changed owner so many times? You have to really dig into that. And again, it falls back to you, Dave. Pre-purchase inspection. Have a yeah. licensed technician look at that vehicle and figure out why has this thing changed hands so many times. And it's not uncommon for like, say, a Corvette. You know, like Corvette owners, they do. the, Or maybe a Ferrari where we don't, you know, I mean, I dealt with exotic cars before, but you know, that, that's one of those common things. You may find a, quite a few owners on a Corvette, but not on their cords and, you know, our normal cars that we drive. No. I mean, here's, here's another red flag. This is another golden nugget. If you look on a Carfax, and let's just say last month it had an air conditioner repair, the month before that it had an air conditioner repair. And I'm talking about a very specific example. This is an actual situation that we saw. And when somebody comes in and they want to sell their car with iAuto agent, then we're like, we're actually looking at that. And we're like, hmm, have you had a problem with your air conditioner? Yeah, that darn thing. It keeps breaking. We can't figure out what's wrong with it. Well, I don't want to sell that car, you know? <laughs> so look at some, some, some common patterns of things that can potentially be over and over. Then what you're going to do is when you want to look at the area where it's bought, we talked about that a little bit uh -huh. ago. If you're, there are a lot of cars coming out of Michigan. I will say that a lot of lease returns, GM cars, 
um, Ford cars. They're coming out of Michigan. You just have to know that they're probably going to have some rust. Surface rust, you know, it may not hurt the car, but it depends on the extent of that and make sure that if it's been in areas such as Florida and Texas, that those cars haven't been underwater. Because that's a whole other story. Oh, wow. Yeah, or I can only imagine that. Yeah, or it could have flood damage. Um, also, cars coming out of Canada do not have, there's no restrictions uh, as far as when they come into the States. So if that car was totaled out and it was in Canada and it comes to the United States, they wash the title and you don't know. Oh, wow. Yeah. So watch for that. Watch on those car faxes. If it says it was from Ontario, a lot of Jeep, um, a lot of Jeeps are coming out of um, Canada. Hmm. Um, you want to look for salvage titles. And here's another thing. And this is just kind of an obvious to me. But look at how long it's actually been at the dealer. You can actually see that. It says vehicle offered for sale on the yeah, car. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. So you can tell if the thing's been there for 365 days, you know, it's not uncommon for a vehicle to be there 90 or 100 days. But if it's been there for a year. There's a reason. Yeah, there's a reason. Yeah, especially, and, well, would that, well, if it's a new car, does that, how, what's the impact on that between a new and a used? So on a new car, you're not going to have a Carfax because there is no history report. Okay. Think, think of a Carfax as the birth of the car and all the doctor's appointments that it went to. <laughs> okay. So the, the except the offer for doctor, sale. What'd you say? That's that vehicle offer for sale, that's if it's a used car. That's correct. Okay. So you can't see how long it's set on the dealer's lot when it's brand new before they sold it. No. Okay. No. And there's I I can because I have some tools to 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 do that, but the normal human can't. I mean I can actually I one of the tools that I have is I can actually track a car from brand spanking new every single time it's ever been listed online, how long it's been listed and the price it was listed for. Yeah, it's really some of the things we can do at iAuto Agent are very cool. Wow, that's awesome. It is. It's it is very neat. And and those are some of the things that we do when we're doing our buyers agents is sure. We're we're going through and we're figuring out where where was this thing bought, you know? And if I find out it was an honest Abe, I call it an honest Abe dealer, you know, that doesn't mean it's a bad deal. It just means that I, you know, here, I, I worked in California a while and we were we were helping someone buy a Mercedes and it was a C63. And it came from this lot that you wouldn't even want to step in. <laughs> and when we were doing our buyer's agent, it was actually for a good client of mine. Not actually Bobby, it was Ed. <laughs> and um, and and he just really appreciated it because he's like, oh, yeah, well, I don't I don't want to get involved with that car. I'm like, I wouldn't either. So the, the thing is, is that the other thing that I want to leave with, we've got about seven minutes, but this is really important. Carfax and AutoCheck are inaccurate. So I think Carfax is inaccurate about 80% of the time. And between the two, over 90% of the time, you will see completely different information on each of the reports. And it will it's crazy. So the question is, what do you do? You do a pre-purchase inspection. And then here's the other thing too, and this is something that a lot of people may be thinking about right now, but if you have an issue with a Carfax and you want to dispute it, let me know and send me an, an email at info at iautoagent.com and I'll, I'll send you detailed instructions on how to dispute the Carfax. Oh, wow. You can dispute them. But if you've ever been, not saying I have, but if you've ever been involved in a court case, those things do not happen overnight. So when you take your car to, let's just say Valvoline, to have your inspection done, and you have 51,512 miles on it, 
and they forget to put the uh, the five in front of that, and now it looks like you have one thousand one hundred and twelve miles, or five one thousand five hundred and twelve miles. Then it's going to pop up on the Carfax that there's been a uh, odometer discrepancy. Oh, yeah, that, uh, yep, an odometer yeah. rollback, and that freaks people out. And it sucks. It really does. And it's no, e it's not an easy task to dispute these types of, I mean, these are massive companies, massive. So I wanted to share that. And, I never knew uh, that. I never thought about that. Yeah. Because, you know, when we get, when we get somebody that wants to sell a vehicle to us and they're like, oh, we you know we want to sell it. And it says odometer discrepancy. We don't say, ah, go take a hike. We're not going to take a vehicle in like that. What we do is we walk them through the process because I can't, I can't change it. They have to change it. It's their car. Sure. We actually had, I'll tell you a story we had. Uh, it was over at one of those, I, I don't remember, Jiffy Lube or one of those places, but we actually were selling a Corvette. It was a 50th anniversary. Oh, wow. Yes. That's a 2003 vet then. Yes. The the one the maroon one, the the magnetic red one or whatever. I don't remember. Just the first year Corvette was like. Yeah, yeah. So so the it was it, so we were actually able to go back, and we worked through it with the client to help get that that off because the the guy that bought the vehicle from us was from California, and. Let's face it, nobody trusts anybody. I mean, obviously, we have an amazing rating out there, but oh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and sell you a 50th anniversary Corvette. Yeah, it only has 10,000 miles. There's no odometer rollback. It doesn't really have 30,000 miles. It only has 10. Really? Prove it to me. So we walked them through those steps to get the odometer fixed at the, at the place. They changed it. And it took some time, but it but it got done. It got done. Yeah. Wow. So basically, Dave, um, you just can't you just can't put all your eggs in that basket, and, and that's that's the moral of this whole. And I really hope that everybody got a lot out of this. And if you're listening, please like subscribe, comment, please send in all your comments of, of topics that you want to hear because we're listening to you. We have a whole list of topics that, that you have, that you have said, this is what we want to hear about. I'm not, we're not just pulling these, these topics off the top of our head because Dave and I don't know what you don't know. So you have to let us know and send in those comments. And the next, so Dave, what are we doing for our next episode? That's a great question, Jay. You know, I've had a lot of people asking me um, about insurance questions and things like that. Uh, but I think, and, and we're going to actually eventually have guests on the show too. So if you're in an industry and you would like to be a guest on the show, please send us an email at info at iautoagent.com. We'll determine if we think that you would be a good fit for the show um, and, what you, and what you could bring to the table for our audience because there's certain things that Dave and I are really, really good at and there's certain things that are outside of our, um, you know, our arena. You know, Our, yeah, insurance is definitely one of them. I know it's yeah. required, and I spend a lot of money on it. So Dave, you know what people have asked. What would, what do you think? What would you like to talk about the next show? Um, the next thing on our list is, you know, people wanted to know: should we? Is it better to buy new or used? And then the other thing that's on, that's on the top of the list is proper maintenance. Let's talk about proper maintenance because I have I've ran into this numerous times now. And if you don't properly maintain your car, it will not properly take care of you. 
Yeah, and maintenance has changed a lot in 22 years. I know that you'll have a lot to share, Dave. Um, so our next topic is going to be about maintenance, properly maintaining your car. And I know Dave has all kinds of valuable tips to have. It could be Mythbusters for maintenance. What'd you say? Mythbusters for maintenance. There you go. So we're going to wrap it up. Um, again, my name is Jay Grossman. I'm the founder and CEO of iAuto Agent. I'm David Marks, Quality Auto STL, where you get trusted services with no surprises. Once again, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Techie Tony with Techie Tony Media. Thanks for making all this happen. And we will see you next week. Please like and subscribe. Talk to you soon. All right. Take care, Jay.